Hey everyone, and so sorry for the delay. Had some behind the scenes issues going on, and I know we're short on time. Thank you so much for sticking around in the chat. Uh, Clarissa, yes, I do have a cat. He chewed on the wire, so that's what I'm gonna say. Um, with all of that, thank you so much for hanging out in the chat. Throw your questions in there, and the starter files are in the link below. Since we're short on time, I'm gonna go ahead and jump right into it. All right, so what we're doing here is we're going to be creating a Valentine's Day animation where the text writes on and we're going to try to get through as much as we can but like i said those starter files are below so be sure to get a hold of those and uh yeah we'll get through as much as we can so sorry about that um so what's happening here is i have this handwritten text it's not a font it's actually something i drew uh, just with a sharpie and a piece of paper and then i took a photo of it and threw it on my computer and now what we're going to do is basically animate that on so Let's go ahead and dive right in. And hello to everyone. I see people from Switzerland and Clarissa. I see that you did the challenge last week. I'm so happy to see that. And hopefully you can catch up on this one. We'll, we'll get, a, get through as much as we can. So let's go ahead and make a new composition. We'll delete that one. All right, so let's make a new comp and we're gonna do 1920 by 1080. That's fine in about seven seconds. All the rest feels good to me. We can call it V-Day whatever works for you. All right, so here's our new comp. First thing we wanna do is make a background layer. So let's go to new solid. And it doesn't matter what color it is, we're gonna change that, but make sure you hit this make comp size and then we will use that to make our gradient background here, um, which is kind of what everything pops on. So to do that, we're gonna use an effect called, if you type in gradient in the effects window, Gradient ramp, go ahead and drag that on. And then the way this works is right now it's set up for a linear ramp. Let's change that to radial so that way it's more of a circle as it goes. And we can set the start point right in the middle. The end point we can bring down here and you can see if I click and drag this around it makes it kind of bigger and smaller so we can set that however we like. So the last thing we need to do is change the colors. So maybe it's a white. And we're kind of going for this like vignette -y sort of feel. And we can make it a little more romantically themed. So something like that could work. I think that looks good, but the whole point of this is to open up the project and play around with it yourself. So we have our background and now we have our text, which is in that starter file. It looks something like this. Let's go ahead and drag that down on top of here. And now here it is in our composition. We need to get rid of the white background and the simplest way to do that. There's a lot of different ways to do it, but the way I like to do it is using an effect called extract, which is just a really simple key. So we drag that effect on here. And if this effects window isn't wide enough, you won't see the edge buttons here in the right hand side of this window. But basically if this section here represents white, this section represents black. And we want to say, Hey, we want to get rid of one color or another. So we just drag these sliders down and automatically you see our white background kind of disappears, which is super easy. Um, you do want to be careful if we look in here really closely, it might get a little grainy or anything. Uh, but let's see if you push it too far, kind of you want to get as much of the color as you can. And what we can do to make sure since it's not perfectly black or white, we can um, add a levels on here. So let's grab a levels effect, bring that over. And what that's going to do is same, similar thing. White is on the right, black is on the left. Hello, Muhammad. Thank you so much for joining. Um, let's see. So yeah, we're going to just make the black color even more pronounced. So we're going to grab this black slider here and just slide it all the way over. So you can see that kind of darkens this up, which tells us, hey, you know, keep this part or lose this part. So this is feeling pretty decent. This is the midtones. You can bring this down, kind of fiddle with these settings here back and forth to get it whatever looks good for your image or if you're using this image. And then the other thing here is it looks a little choppy as it is right now. So we can come in here and we can grab, let's see, what do we want to grab? We can grab, um, there's a couple different options for this. I think the simplest is probably like a matte choker. Uh, let's see here, matte. So there's a matte choker. There's also a simple matte choker. I think the difference is 
The matte choker gives you a little bit more flexibility. Um, so maybe you put this on and then you can change the choke on here just ever so slightly. You can see how that adjusts the text here of our original um, handwriting. So, which is got some scribbles from the Sharpie, but I think we'll be good enough. I'm not too worried about these edges over here. Um, those, those aren't gonna be part of it as we do our masking, which is kind of this, this part here. We have all these masks going on and we're gonna use that stroke effect. So we draw on these masks in order from start to finish and it, it correlates to how you would do handwriting. So we want to make sure to keep these lines right in the middle and let's just go ahead and do this. We'll do a, we'll do a couple letters and then the rest we'll copy over just for time. So we're gonna grab our pen tool here and if you're not good at masking, this is where you're gonna get good. So uh, we can zoom in here and we have uh, on this layer, make sure you have this layer selected. You don't wanna accidentally not have a layer select and you click here and you think you're drawing a mask, but you're actually creating a shape layer. That's not what we wanna do. So we're gonna delete that. Make sure you're selected on the mask here and we hit the pen tool and I'm gonna click here to set my first point and we're not actually drawing a complete mask. We're just gonna click and hold and kind of keep this line right in the middle all the way throughout. So I'm clicking and holding. So it creates that kind of Bezier shape. And we're just gonna go really quick and kind of add a bunch of these points. And we do do this for each letter. We're basically hand tracing and you can move it up a little bit if you need to. Now we come to the edge here and this is where you would likely pick up your pen if you are actually writing. So what I like to do is make a new mask because this is kind of where you'd start and then the next thing would start up here. So I'm gonna come back to this tool here and I'm just gonna click anywhere. So I select this layer. Now, when I come back to this pen tool, it's gonna to make a new mask. And if I hit the M button, we'll see, I'm gonna click up here and same thing, just keep dragging down. And what's happening is it made a second mask on here. So we're gonna make a whole sequence of masks and the stroke effect will go in order and bring on all those masks. Hello, Jaina. Welcome. Thanks for watching over on YouTube. And hello, hello over on Behance. Okay, so we have this shape here. You continue with all of these. So let me just do a little bit more um, so you get the idea and kind of get some practice with the pen tool and uh, creating these shapes. So that one was pretty bad. I'm just going to undo and you can click and drag again, it creates that bezier. And if you need to, you can hold the control um, button and you can kind of control these anchors one by one and then come back to your endpoint. The main thing you wanna pay attention to in this effect is not to connect and close your mask like that because that'll cause a problem. So we continue drawing and we basically are gonna kind of outline this whole thing. And we can come back up, that's fine because at the end of the day, we are just, um, tracing these lines because the only part that's going to show up is the black text when we are done here and the cool thing about this effect is it's very custom it's not a font so it's like literally your handwriting or i've also used this effect for doing simple drawings and just uh, animating them when like trying to design the drawing uh, in a computer program would have just taken way too long or been too difficult so we'll finish up this mask here and again, I'm trying to keep this kind of in the middle so we get both sides of the font and this will make sense in a second. Oops, there's a new mask. Click on this end piece. So we have all these paths here and I'm gonna go ahead and stop there and I'll show you how this is working. So we have a couple different colors here. If you ever need to turn the mask on or off, click this button here. So now the bread and butter, the magic. Let's use our stroke effect. So, oops. All right, so generate stroke. We're gonna go ahead and put that on here. Now, nothing has really happened. What we need to do is come in and change some of these settings. We're gonna check this box that says all masks. And then we see something happening here. We see this white. Let's go ahead and just make it black. And then we also wanna tell it right now it's on original image. We can change it to on transparent and we get this look. And then we can also just have it reveal the original image that I drew. So kind of cool. Hello, Robert, welcome back. All right, so this is the part where you'd kind of play with the thickness. Um, you don't want it too thick uh, cause then things will start animating weird. We kind of have this 
And then let's go ahead and just start here and animate this since we are really short on time. So sorry for the late start, guys. And we're gonna come down to this end. We'll start at zero. And the end is gonna basically take us, these masks are gonna be in sequential order. So the end is right here, right? And if we back that up all the way to the front, it's gonna start here and then finish here. So we can set a keyframe at the start. We're gonna say, hey, the end is at zero. Come forward. Maybe we go five seconds or so. And then we say, hey, the end is at 100. And let's see what that looks like. So things are happening. Um, I think once we add some more, or even if we were to keyframe this over a little quicker, it would work well. So what I'm gonna do is actually copy these masks from the project, so you have these in your project, but just in the interest of time, we can see what we're working with here. So I'm gonna just paste those to save some time. And this, this is basically, you follow that whole thing all the way through. And now, with all those masks applied, it's gonna look something like this. And you can, you can play with this a bit to get this looking how you'd like. I think what else we could do is maybe add uh, like a drop shadow. So if we added the drop shadow on here, um, already that kind of helps it look a little nicer. If you're not happy with this like really kind of harsh look, which it depends on how you draw it, right? Um, you could come in here to the stroke and you could change this to maybe on transparent where it actually uses uh, a symmetrical stroke width. I'm not sure the correct term for that, um, but instead of using your actual image, it's just making a black line. So that could be what you're looking for. And then you can make this a little, little thinner if you want, whatever feels good, but that's the basic essentials. You're going to animate that end. All right. How are we doing here? We got five minutes. All right. So there's how you animate from just a photo that you took. So now what we can do, I also drew a couple hearts here and then we can animate those hearts on, have them kind of pop up. And we only really need one because we could just duplicate it, rotate it, change it. Um, I put a couple here, that way it looks a little bit differently because it's nice to have some variation. So let's go ahead and grab one of those. And to do this, I'm just gonna duplicate this since we already did all the um, keying work on this one to make it look nice. What we can do is just duplicate this and we'll call this um, number one heart outline. So we're going to make two different layers and we're going to right click to change the color of this just to keep it organized. So here's our heart outline. I'm going to hit the M button for mask and I'm just going to delete all of these because we don't need them. And we can actually, let's see, we're going to have to turn off our stroke effect for a moment. So here's everything and this is on just this layer, so we can solo that first. Oh, that won't work. We can take this and then just draw our mask the same way on one of these hearts as we did on the text. And so we're gonna make this heart kind of animate on with the outline. And then biggest thing here, again, don't close this mask, just put it really close and then kind of make sure it's centered somewhat. That should work. And if I hit the U key on this layer, since we duplicate it, we have our animation on here already. And we could just make this way shorter, like maybe, maybe a second or so, somewhere in there. So now we should have our first heart, but we need to come over and make sure that our stroke layer is turned back on. So now we should see there's our heart, animates on. So the other thing we can do here is while this animates on, we can also, and maybe this doesn't start till we push this over, maybe it starts a little later, we could ease this out and then ease this in. And what that does is basically just gives it a little bit more smoothness as it ramps in and out of the keyframe. So let's move our keyframe back over. All right, how are we doing? We got a couple minutes left. Uh, Clarissa, I'm so glad you like it. Um, this, like I said, this is a fun effect and it's very unique there. It's a little time consuming, but it works well. So what else can we also do here? Let's put some background scribble. So I'm going to take this heart and I'm going to duplicate it and we're going to hit enter or the return key. And I'm just going to rename this one because I like to stay organized. This can be scribble. So here's our scribble. Let's come up here and delete this stroke. And since we duplicated this layer, if 
we still have the mask here. We just deleted the stroke. We're going to put another effect on here called scribble. And if we put this on. So already we get something really cool happening here. And the scribble effect by default is already got this kind of animation, which is looking pretty good. I think it might look better if our outline is on top. So I'm going to put the scribble underneath our outline. And so we have these two layers working together. So we have our scribble and our outline. And uh, let's see here, is there a way to make the letters more smooth instead of choppy? So yeah, you can play with the stroke effects in there. Um, also the timing of your keyframes on your mask, I don't think keyframes is the right term for that, but the distance between all of these will help and how many you have is gonna help smooth it out a little bit. And then you can play with the keyframes for um, the start and end point as well. So hopefully you'll be able to play with that in the project and have some fun with it. Um, so coming back to our stroke here, we have this here animating on. This feels kind of intense. I think this scribble might need to, maybe we change this one to, let's see, that's our scribble. Come back to our outline. I think the outline might be a little on the thick side and I think I'd like to, let's see, here's our stroke. Maybe we change this to reveal image in this case. Kind of looks a little more hand-drawn. And then on our scribble, we can also come down to the scribble effect and we can change the color, something like a red. So now we have kind of this happening here and I'm almost out of time, but uh, what we would do here is take this scribble and we can just um, keyframe again, just as we would on the other one, we can keyframe the end point. So we keyframe this end at 100, start a little earlier, and it starts at zero. So it also animates on and you have something like that. Unfortunately, we didn't have time to get to the other stuff, but sorry for the technical issues. Download the project and feel free to join in and play along with it. Um, the majority of the fundamentals are here. So again, thank you so much for tuning in and sorry you missed it.